Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation from Romania. Romanian math problems are just amazing and this problem is obviously amazing too. Anyways, we have 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power x equals 2 minus 1 plus root 2 to the power x. Now, we're going to go ahead and add 1 plus root 2 to the power x to both sides. That's the original statement of the problem. And let's go ahead and do that. Add this to both sides. And I'm going to write it as root 2 plus 1 to the power x equals 2. Because we're going to be working with conjugates, lots of interesting stuff. That's why I want to write the root 2 first. Okay? Now, what kind of relationship do you see between the bases? Obviously, the exponents are the same. So if I can relate the bases, I'll be in good shape, right? So for this problem, I'm going to use substitution. Substitution, as you know, is an amazing method. And it's going to work nicely here. But we got to do a little bit of work. So what do you substitute? We're going to be using something that doesn't exist in the original equation. That's kind of funny, right? But it's going to help us. So I'm going to go ahead and call root 2 minus 1 to the power x t. Any variable is fine. Now, why do I choose root 2 minus 1 x? Because it's related to this one. And of course, this one too. So what's relationship? Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's start with this one. Root 2 minus 1 and root 2 plus 1 are conjugates, right? So when we multiply them, we get rid of the radical and we get a real number. Not only just a real number, but we get a very good real number. You'll see. So what is root 2 plus 1 times root 2 minus 1? It's 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1, right? Awesome. Now we can go ahead and raise both sides to the power x, and the answer is not going to change because 1 to the power x is still going to be 1. Make sense? So this is really cool because we do have root 2 plus 1 to the power x in our expression, and we just named this t. So what is going on here? Root 2 plus 1 to the power x is multiplied by t, and this is equal to 1. So from here, root 2 plus 1 to the power x can be written as 1 over t, which is the reciprocal of t. So root 2 plus 1 to the x and root 2 minus 1 to the x are not just conjugates, they're also reciprocals because their product is 1. Okay? Awesome. So we got these two things now. What do you do with the 3 minus 2 root 2? Now, if you have done this before, if you've seen something similar, you're hopefully going to realize that 3 minus 2 root 2 is actually a radical perfect square. So you can actually find the square root of this. How? You can write this as root 2 minus 1 squared, and then it's just going to be root 2 minus 1. Does that make sense? Or in other words, to keep a long story short, if you square root 2 minus 1, you get root 2 squared minus 2 times root 2 times 1 plus 1 squared. Root 2 squared is 2. This is 2 root 2, and 1 squared is 1, and this becomes 3 minus 2 root 2. So, in other words, 3 minus 2 root 2 is root 2 minus 1 squared. Now, what happens if you raise it to the power x, right? So, this is what we need to work on. Well, if you just raise both sides to the power x, then you're going to get the answer. So, in other words, root 2 minus 1 squared is 3 minus 2 root 2. And then let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power x. And then we're going to get 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power x equals root 2 minus 1 to the power 2x, which can also be written as root 2 minus 1 to the power x squared. Make sense? Because 3 minus 2 root 2 is a perfect square in radicals, in a radical world. Okay, so let's go ahead and make all that substitution. 3 minus 2 root 2 to the power x is going to be this number to the power 2x, which we wrote as root 2 minus 1 to the x to the second, right? And we do know that root 2 minus 1 to the x is t from here. So this is going to be t squared. Make sense? Now, here's what we have from here. Let's go ahead and erase this. We call this t. Let's not forget that. 
Sometimes I just erase and then I forget what my substitution was and then I can't back substitute. Crazy, right? Now, this becomes t squared and remember this is 1 over t because it's the reciprocal right here. So now this is equal to 2 and then this is my equation. I'm going to go ahead and keep it there and write it uh, down again one more time. t squared plus 1 over t equals 2. I don't want to erase everything because I don't want to get in trouble in case I need these later, right? So now, this looks like a weird equation, but let's get rid of the radicals, multiply everything by t, and it becomes a cubic. Don't worry about it because you don't need the cubic formula to solve this problem because notice that t equals 1 works. It is a solution. And one of the things that you should always do is, if you have a polynomial equation, always check the sum of the coefficients because if the sum of coefficients is 0, then 1 is a solution. In this case, t equals 1 is a solution, Therefore, we can factor this expression. How? By generating factors of t minus 1. Because the factor theorem tells us if t equals 1 is a solution, then t minus 1 is a factor. Make sense? Okay, great. I hope that made sense. Let's go ahead and proceed with the solution. t cubed. Now, how do I generate a factor of t minus 1, or a, I should say, a multiple of t minus 1, more appropriately, well, I can just do t cubed minus 1 because t cubed minus 1 is divisible by t minus 1. In other words, t minus 1 is a factor of t cubed minus 1. Does that make sense? But by doing that minus 1 thing, I kind of have to adjust, and at the end, I'm supposed to get a plus 1, so I have to add 2, which is nice because now this is factorable. And remember the uh, difference of two cubes and the last two terms are also factorable and we get a common factor. Obviously t minus 1 is going to be a factor because we know t equals 1 is a solution, right? We already knew that. And this is t squared plus t plus 1 minus 2 because t minus 1 we took out. So it's going to be 1 minus 2, that's going to be minus 1. Awesome. We were happy with t equals 1, but we found other solutions. This is quadratic. Let's solve it. It should have two solutions, right? And it does have real solutions. You know how I know that real quick? If you look at the, the coefficient of t squared, and if you look at the constant term, one of them is a plus sign, the other one is a minus sign. There's always going to be a real solution. And think about b squared minus 4ac. That's where that comes from. Whenever you have a and c with opposite signs, in other words, if ac is less than 0, b squared minus 4ac is always going to be greater than 0 which means we're going to have two real solutions. Okay? Make sense? Now, let's go ahead and find them then. t equals 1, we know it. The other ones are going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4. So that's going to give you square root of 5 divided by 2. Awesome, but not so awesome because are we supposed to have two solutions or three solutions? Let's check. One of them is going to be negative 1 plus root 5 over 2, which I'd like to write as root 5 minus 1 over 2. Hopefully you'll recognize that, right? Doesn't it have a golden flavor, right? And the other solution is just going to be negative 1 minus root 5 over 2, which you can also write as negative root 5 minus 1 over 2. But however you write it, you can realize this expression is always negative. What is that supposed to mean? What is t, right? Let's go back and check. t is root 2 minus 1 to the power x, right? Here we go. Root 2 minus 1 to the power x is t. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. And I got three solutions. But root 2 minus 1 is a positive base, and the result, t, cannot be negative. So we're going to have to reject this too bad. We end up with two solutions, this one and this one. So our solution set is 1 and root 5 minus 1 over 2. But these are just the t values. I got to find the x values by setting my expression equal to t, which is 1. And from here, obviously, x becomes 0, right? Fairly straightforward. The other one is not that straightforward, but you can still handle it. Come on. And I'll show you a graph which kind of verifies the result. So you can go ahead and set this equal to root 5 minus 1 over 2. Again, that is a positive quantity, so we have a real solution from here, so it's all good. By the way, if you set root 2 minus 1 to the power x equal to a negative number, then you can find the complex solutions. But they're going to take a long time, so I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you. 
I know you hate that, but hopefully you don't. Now, from here we can go ahead and ln both sides. Let's go ahead and ln both sides, and that's gonna bring the exponent down. And we're gonna get x times ln root two minus one equals ln root five minus one over two. And by division, we're gonna get the value of x, which is ln root five minus one over two divided by ln root two minus one. Okay, that should be the x value, but that's not the only x value because x equals zero is another solution, right? So we got two solutions for this, so you should see two intersection points. Let's go ahead and check them out. Some results, right? Okay, great. Real solution. Is there only one? Check it out. This is a little different because they put a 2 here, which squares that thing, and you can kind of write this as something squared and then put the 2 in the front and cancel them out. I don't know why they have it. Anyways, whatever. And some solutions, obviously, this also includes complex solutions. So if you're interested, check your results with these. Make sure to take a picture, right? And then... Here's the graph. That kind of looks like a parabola, but it's not. It's an exponential function plus another exponential function, right? And we have two intersection points. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.